بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ السلام علیکم ہوپ یو آر کوپنگ ویل ود دی لاک ڈاؤن سچویشن اینڈ آلسو ریسیونگ دی فل بلیسنگز آف ہولی منتھ آف رمضان آئی آلسو ہوپ دیٹ یو آر ناٹ نیگلیکٹنگ یور اسٹڈیز ڈیورنگ دس پیریڈ I have always emphasized to you about the importance of epidemiology. Having sound knowledge of epidemiology helps you throughout your professional career. There are two major types of epidemiological study designs. If the researcher is going to intervene then it is called interventional or experimental study. If there is no intervention by the researcher it is going to be an observational study in our earlier lectures we have talked about the observational studies today we are going to discuss the concept of experimental studies the sub types of experimental studies and steps in their conduction will also be discussed nowadays in the crisis situation due to emergence of covid-19 importance of epidemiological research cannot be overemphasized every country and every prominent university is engaged in some sort of epidemiological research to understand the disease manifestation to find out its preventive measures and to identify its treatment options it is hoped that we will soon understand the mysteries of this pandemic today our focus is on experimental studies experimental study is also known as interventional study in this study researcher has control over the exposure he or she does not only observe the situation and records the study findings like observational study but also intervenes and manipulates the situation and measures the effect of manipulation uniqueness of experimental research experimental research is similar to the cohort study that is both proceed from exposure to outcome from cause to effect in the experimental study independent variable or exposure is under direct control of researcher this is the only type of research that attempts to influence a particular variable or particular factor it is best for testing hypothesis about cause and effect relationship experimental study is of two types number 1 is randomized controlled trials involving a process of random allocation second one is non randomized trials without involving a process of random allocation in randomized control trials subjects are allocated by using randomization while in non randomized trials process of randomization is not used randomized control trial it is the gold standard for the therapeutic research it means it is best available accurate result it is the best research design to establish cause and effect association it provides scientific proof of etiological factors randomized control trial has two sub designs concurrent parallel design in this design comparisons are made between 
two randomly assigned groups. That is, one group is exposed to a specific treatment and the other group is not. A study subjects or patient remain in their assigned groups throughout the study. Second one is crossover type of study design. In this design, two groups are selected randomly, the study group and control group. A study group receives the treatment under consideration and the control group receives alternate treatment. The two groups are observed over time, then patients or subject in each group are weaned off from medicine to allow for the elimination of medicine from the body. After elimination of medicine from the body, two groups are switched. Those who received the treatment and were in study group changed to control group and received alternate treatment and patients or subjects who were in control group changed to study group and received treatment under consideration. A study group becomes control group. Control group becomes study group. We have to go through six basic steps while conducting a randomized control trial. First step is drawing up a protocol. So first we have to draw a protocol. Number two selection of reference and experiment population. Third one is after selection of population randomization then manipulation or intervention then follow up of manipulation and intervention finally assessment of outcomes now we will discuss each one of the basic steps for conduction of randomized control trial in some detail the first step is drawing up a protocol a protocol is a set of rules and procedures for conducting or performing something it answers the questions of what when where who and how while drawing up the protocol for an rct we will focus on setting aims and objectives of the study setting up the criteria for selection of study and control groups while doing so giving due care to ethical considerations deciding about the sample size and sampling technique deciding about the modalities of treatment options and while doing so giving due care to the standardization of process drawing up the schedule of work and assigning responsibilities of task and lastly evaluation of the outcomes next step is selection of reference and experimental population first select reference population to which findings of trial are to be applied and then from this reference population select experimental or study population randomly keeping in consideration that study subjects or participants should be eligible for trial according to the criteria described in the study protocol ethical considerations for example informed consent and avoidance of harm should be considered the study population should have high probability for outcome The third step is randomization. What is it? 
Randomization is a statistical procedure by which study participants or study subjects are allocated into two groups that is study and control groups. This procedure is done by using random numbers table. Randomization removes selection bias. Every participant or subject gets an equal chance of being allocated into any group. It ensures that investigator has no control over allocation of participants or subjects to either study or control group, thus eliminating selection bias. Randomization makes comparability between the two groups possible, that is like can be compared with like. All study participants are stratified into subgroups according to the variables like sociodemographic characteristics and then randomly allocated into study and control groups. Randomization is done after participants have been qualified for the trial and have given informed consent to participate in the study. This slide is to show you part of a table of random numbers used for randomization. The fourth step is manipulation or intervention. After selection of groups, the next step is to intervene or manipulate the study or experimental group by the deliberate application or withdrawal of the suspected causal factor or independent variable. Example, suspected causal factor or independent variable may be a drug, vaccine, any diet, any procedure or any habit as mentioned in the protocol. Effect of it is then determined by measurement of the final outcome or measurement of dependent variable. For example, incidence of disease, survival time or recovery period. Next step is follow up. In this examination of the experimental and control group is carried out at the defined interval of time in a standard manner till the final assessment of outcome. Follow up may be short or may require many years depending upon the type of study. Some attrition problem arises in this study due to deaths of the participants, migration of the study subjects or participant to some other area and sometime loss of interest by the participants. Last step is assessment of the outcomes of the trial in terms of either positive or negative positive results that is benefit of the experiment such as reduced incidence, severity and mortality from disease. It may also be less cost to the health services. Negative results that is increased frequency of side effects, complications and deaths. Study results are assessed by statistical methods by applying test of significance that you were already taught previously in biostatistics. Today 
we have covered some aspects of experimental studies we will continue our deliberations about experimental studies in our next lecture allah hafiz